Oh, and good morning, everybody. Hi, this is uh, Brian Paymont calling in. How are you doing today, sir? I'm good. How are you? Absolutely fantastic. I'm very excited to talk with you because I've never seen a book like this before in my life. This is a great exploration, and it also kind of teases the imagination to try something new. Yeah, that's that was kind of the goal, basically. Uh, so I work in a restaurant, and kind of the idea was, you know, at the end of a meal, people kind of are deciding... Uh, what should we do? Should we have dessert or another cocktail? So the goal was to kind of solve that problem. To find the answers to everything that's going on inside this book. Because, I mean, you, you, you look at the pictures and I mean, your, your eyes you know, are drawn to it. But then you get to see the history of how this dessert even came into being and then turn it into a drink. Right, right. Yeah, we, uh, yeah it was a lot of fun researching just the, the history behind each drink. Um, the one that I, that comes to mind is the, uh, Explorer cake from Antarctica. I really, you know, when you think of Antarctica, you don't think culinary traditions, right? Uh, but they found a 106 year old fruit cake that was still preserved and edible. So I want to, uh, I made a cocktail inspired by that and I think it definitely tastes better than a original fruit cake. So. <laughs> mm. That's one thing, especially this time of year. And, and I mean, as long as we get it, you know, get up to uh, J- uh, January 1st, I mean, I mean, this is a great book for people to get their hands on now because as New Year's does get here, like you said, like, like with the fruit cakes and things, I mean, they're out there, we can do it. And you, you show us the way. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It was, um, yeah, a lot of a lot of fun. I think my favorite cocktail would probably be the Bananas Foster. I was going to um, ask you about the, that. Yeah, so that's the one on the cover. Um, my wife and I took a trip to New Orleans and went to Brennan's, where the Bananas Foster really was a, re- created. Um, and so, yeah, love that one. It's a lot of fun, especially around New Year's Eve, because you get to light it. So yeah. it's you light the bananas on fire. So it's a lot of fun. Like See, that. that explains why it starts off the book. I mean, big letters here. I go, why was this one of all of them the first one? And now I understand. Yeah, it's my favorite. It wow. uses some aged rum, some brown sugar, simple syrup, cream. Yeah, it's a it's a tasty one. Now you talk about the the pumpkin pie, and 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 it it, it describes it as being from Central America. Are we talking about the bread basket of America, or are we talking about Central America? Central America. Yeah. Really, I didn't yeah. know it came from that area. It's so all American. It is, yeah, but it's it's. I mean, just the pumpkin in general, just. As such a deep, deep roots, 5500 BC uh, were some of the earliest foods that the Euro- European explorers uh, brought back from the New World. So, yeah, I wanted to include pumpkin pie. That was a great one for Thanksgiving, too. What was it like to turn these into a drink? I mean, to be able to sit down and because I mean, you give us exactly what we need when it comes to ounces and, and, and the tools that we need to bring it to life and everything. Yeah. So the, the idea was kind of to start with the original dessert and then deconstruct it. Yeah. So. You know, with like the peach cobbler, what makes it, of course, you have the fresh peaches. Yeah. Um, when I think of peach cobbler, I go to bourbon. So it's just kind of kind of deciding, you know, what, what might work well together. A lot of trial and error. But, yeah, I think all, all the cocktails came out tasting much like the desserts. So when you when you discovered the error, I mean, they, they always say that when there's an error, there's all, you, you've just discovered something new. So, I mean, what, what kind of mistakes uh, really led you to a, a greater taste? Right. So if you had, it might be the base spirit. Um, it might be just a, a, an ingredient, um, like for the pumpkin pie, just adding a little bit of the Angostura bitters, mm. just gave it that nice spice that we tend to associate with uh, pumpkin pie and fresh ginger. So just kind of playing, you know, going back and forth, trying different ingredients, but trying to stay true to the original dessert as much as possible. Who would have ever thought there was a sugar shortage? And so people turned to carrots that became the carrot cake. I know. I know. I love that. Yeah. And then uh, there's also one of my favorite histories is for the dragon fruit cocktail. Um, so in, with COVID-19, uh, Vietnam, they kind of shut down trade with China. So they had a bakery in Ho Chi Minh City developed a recipe. So they used the they made a bright pink um, loaf of bread. So they actually took all the dragon fruit that they couldn't export and they made uh, they put six they replaced sixty percent of the water wow. in the dough with the dragon fruit smoothie, and they were selling. I mean, they were producing twenty thousand loaves of bread a day. So wow. it's pretty amazing. Wow, I, I see those dragon fruit being purchased by a lot of people, and the younger generation really digs that fruit. Yeah, I mean, it's a showstopper when you when you see it in the grocery store. It's yeah, it's impressive. So that would be fun to make into a drink. How important is sight when it comes to bringing these drinks forward? Oh, it's huge because, you know, we eat and drink with our eyes first. Yep. So I think a a nice garnish is super important on every cocktail. Yeah. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. I never even thought about the maple being up there, maple syrup uh, being uh, uh, so popular up in Canada in the way of they use it as a, as a sugar tool. Oh, it's huge. Yeah. And we had, so my dad's from Montreal. So we had the opportunity to go when they had their maple fest and it was really neat. You get to see all the tree, the maple trees tapped and the lines going yeah. from tree to tree. Yeah. So I had to put that in with the Quebec sugar pie. Absolutely. How long did it take you to create this? Because, I mean, the exploration, A, had to have been absolutely fantastic fun, and B, it's like, it's like you had to make sure that you did it right so that we on this side of the book will get to, you know, we'll sit there and say, my God! Yeah, yeah. So overall, I've probably off and on over about two years wow. to come up with the recipes and perfect them and make sure they're ready to go. But yeah, it was, it was, <laughs> it's a fun two year process though. Wow. For in, sure. in Greece, am I pronouncing this right? Ravani, it's got the vanilla lemon zest and even some rose water. Yeah. The Ravani. So you can find, and you can find rose water, um, any beverage kind of any beverage market will have the rose water probably in the grocery store as well. Yeah. But yeah, it just adds a nice touch to it. Wow. So what, what was a, a country that really shocked you the, the most when it, when it came to desserts? Um, I would probably say uh, Morocco. Really? Spring. So I have one, uh, it's called Sefa. That's so, so the original is uh, noodles, couscous, and then it's raisins and icing. So it could be savory, it could be sweet. So that was a really fun one to turn into a cocktail. Really enjoy that. It's a kind of a challenge. That, that's that's <laughs> for that one. I use uh, amaretto, a little bit of tawny port wine, and actually almond milk, lemon juice, and some cinnamon. Mm-hmm. So trying to bring out those flavors from the original dish. Mm. Well, you said amaretto, man. I, that that right there in itself says hello to me because I mean you can mix so many things with amaretto and really come up with a you know unique blend. Oh yeah, amaretto is super versatile. Yeah, we get a lot of amaretto sours too where I work. Mm. Um, very popular. Are, are you hoping that restaurants and different nightclubs will pick this up and say, hey, look, I mean, th- we've got to try this and we've got to grow with it? Absolutely. Yeah, I would love to. It would be neat to see, uh, you know, a liquid dessert section on, on the menus. Mm-hmm. I, think it'd be, I think it'd be pretty popular with uh, customers, yeah. Don't you think, though, that we have to change as uh, as the consumer instead of just reaching for the just say, look, take your time and enjoy this like a dessert? Right. I completely agree. It doesn't have to be overly strong. You know, you're not at the end of a meal, you're not trying to, you know, start out the night. So, yeah, just savor it, you know, drink it slowly and just pull out all the, you know, try to taste all the flavors from the original dessert and the cocktail. It's a lot of fun. Yeah, I got to try that that Pavlora from, from Australia because, I mean, I mean, first of all, I love meringue and how you were able to bring this together, I have no clue. <laughs> It was fun. So I did the original, yeah, I made, you know, homemade meringue. Uh, it just adds a, a nice garnish and kind of pays pays homage to the original dessert because it has a, you know, the meringue shell. So, so are, are you trying these out at your own restaurant? I mean, have, did you get to work at first? Oh, yeah. So I, most I made at home, but yeah, I definitely have worked them at the restaurant and had other bartenders and uh, servers I worked with try them out and see what they think. Definitely as many tastes as possible makes a better drink so as many tasters as you can get wow absolutely the lakma from egypt mm. this this has got some honey in it does it not yeah so it's kind of like uh it's a it's almost like a donut but yeah with honey <laughs> and sugar so very tasty well you have to be crazy in order to put a book like this together man <laughs> it was a lot of fun i joke with my wife i'm like somebody has to you know she was a big taster too so it's like it's a tough job but somebody's got to do it right Wow. So now with, with the cream brulee, do you make it thick enough to where if you wanted to use a teaspoon, you could just, or do you, is it a sipper? Uh, so it is a, it is a very thick cocktail because I wanted it to be, you know, a similar texture to the, to the original dessert. So it does use a whole egg in the creme brulee. Really? And then I kind of did, uh, you know, with the creme brulee, we think about the, the topping, you know, where it's like the candy kind of crust. So I did a turbinado sugar and you light that with a, a little blow torch if you have one and put it on the rim. So it just adds a nice little touch, nice garnish. But yeah, the idea is, yeah, it's heavy cream, a whole egg. So yeah, that's a, that's a slow sipper. Well, being here in the South, one of the things that we are blessed with is that we have fig trees down here and they grow by the billion. So you have some figgy pudding here. Oh yeah. That's a great, that was a great one for Christmas too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we had that on the menu at the restaurant where I worked for a little while. That was a lot of fun. I, I would think that the brandy would kind of give it kind of a, a like a, like a bitter taste to it. How do you, how do you how do you make your way around that? Is that going to be in the simple syrups? 
Yeah, so the fig simple um, will kind of balance that out. And I'm not a fan of super sweet cocktails. So each each dessert is, you know, it's sweet, but not overly sweet. I wanted to make sure it wasn't yeah too sweet because yep. it, it would be easy to do. Yeah, because the garnish is made out of cranberries, dried cranberries. So it's, it's like, wow, when when do you jump into the cranberries? At the beginning of it to kind of just prepare your, your palate or do you do it at the end? Probably towards the end, yeah. yeah. And the, the mint, so the mint kind of acts as... You know, when you bring it to your mouth to the, on the nose, it's just a nice uh, and refreshing smell when you get to it. So. Wow. Just th- yeah. This is such a fantastic book. Are we going to see this on Netflix or Hulu, a, a TV special somehow? Maybe get, team you up with Gordon Ramsay or something? Oh, I, that would be great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because he's never really put focus on, on, on dessert drinks like this. And I, th- I think that's one of the reasons why I'm so excited about this book is that I've never seen anything like this. Yeah, I think we, you know, there are some dessert drinks like chocolate martini or right. espresso martini that are kind of staples. But I, yeah, my goal was to, you know, b- reach out and branch out and try some new things. So I think I think we got that. Yeah, because we've become pretty much the lazy generation that goes to the liquor store and buys the stuff already mixed in a bottle. And this right here gives, says, no, 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 no. You learned how to use the air fryer. Learn how to do this as well. Right. And I wanted to make sure all the ingredients were easily accessible and you can find pretty much everything at your local local liquor store or supermarket or yeah. So, wow. Well, speaking of looking, where can people find out more about you and give you some love and support, sir? So I am on Instagram. It's at Brian Pema. And then I am, the book is for sale on Amazon right now. It's a perfect place. You got to come back. First of all, before I even, before we uh, close out, um, what what else do you have in the works? What are you? Were you going to guide us in, in in like food in the future? What are you going to be doing? So I'm actually working on a, just finishing up a project. It's called Cradle and Cocktail. So we have my wife and I have a one and a half year old and a four year old. So I'm doing uh, cocktails inspired by the first few years of parenting. So <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> there's plenty of inspiration. So that's going to be the next one coming out. Well, you got to come back to this show when that one gets finished, so we can talk about it. Oh, I'd love to. All right, man. Will you be brilliant today, okay? All right. Thanks for having me. Thank you.